Welcome back to our video module on mechanics and materials. In our previous video, we took a look at how axial stress functions. Basically, we have a force applied on this small little area that is perpendicular to this face, and it stretches things. Secondly, we looked at the influence of shear stress. And in this case, the force of this on, applied at this small area goes right along the surface. So you have a perpendicular, force to the surface and really a parallel force to the surface. Well, what do we do if it's in between? In other words, what happens if we have a force that looks like this? Today, we're going to look at what happens if we apply a force or a stress is applied and there's some sort of oblique plane that it's acting upon. Or in other words, let's take a sideways view of our original beam and we're going to apply some sort of axial load, force A, but this time we're going to pretend that the surface we're worried about is at some angle theta, which means me as a little block I'm right here. Here, let's adjust this to green just so we keep everything separate. I'm this rotated particle through some angle theta. All right, so I've been rotated a little bit. And then there's some applied force. And we're not doing a free body diagram. We're just kind of doing some sketches right now. I should quickly point out that while I've shown the applied force with a green arrow and an FA for both the body and the small particle, these are not the same thing. The one on the left is the force applied to the overall body. The one on the right on the small particle drawing is just the force that that particular particle feels. And I want to know how do I think about this? How do I think about this applied force? Well, a way that I could do it is I go back to what I know about vectors. If this direction, the axial stress, is perpendicular, and the shear stress is parallel, then let's try and write that. We can imagine this force is a sum of an axial stress and a shear stress. All right, so now we'll do F tau, so that's the force due to the shear stress, and we'll do um, the force due to the axial stress, and now we have our applied force. So this seems to address an interesting situation where we have some sort of force that causes an axial stress and a shear stress. And in fact, this is often the case. It's seldom one or the other. So the way we distinguish between our, our axial stresses and our shear stresses is just by looking at this looking at this face right here. The perpendicular component is the axial component, the parallel component is the shear component, and we combine those two in vector notation to make equivalent forces for some sort of applied force. And in fact, this type of question right here where we're doing some sort of really, it's an axial load, right? But it, from the particle's perspective, it's an axial and shear combination. That's really the same as if we had done some sort of applied load at an oblique angle. One final note in pink. Generally when we talk about some sort of applied load, we use the letter P. When we're talking about some sort of shear force, we'll use the letter V. And when we're talking about some sort of axial component, we'll use the letter F. So the takeaway for this is we can think of the force due to axial stress as a perpendicular component and we can think of the force due to the shear stress as a parallel component or a component moving in this direction and we can combine those in vector notation right here to understand forces acting in any direction. Hopefully this gives you a basic idea of how to use axial and shear stresses together to deal with any applied force in any direction.
as well as give you a little bit more of a flavor of the distinction between axial and shear stresses. I should point out that all of this was done, like done down here in 2D, all the same rules apply in 3D. Thanks for joining me, and next we're going to take a look at what's happening here. When the particle deforms, what's really going on, and how do we think about it? I look forward to seeing you then.